Welcome back to the channel. Today's project will be refinishing an outdoor live edge teak table. This was a slab that I was able to pick up relatively inexpensively. I think I paid 150 bucks or something like that for it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the process of refinishing this piece of teak. At the end, we'll end up putting a base on it and then you'll see the final product. So, but to get there, Let's go through the process. The first thing here is I started off sanding this slab with 120 grit. And the reason why I wanted to do that was I wanted to flatten it out more than what it was. It had quite a bit of texture to it. I didn't want to take all the texture out of it because it's a piece of live edge teak. I wanted to retain all that character. So I wanted to knock it down a bit, but not too much. This left some of the grain, uh, there were some imperfections in the piece that I later filled in with some MA glue. But overall, this was a really nice piece of wood. So after I got done sanding it with the 120, I then moved to 240 and then 400 just to get a really smooth finish. I then came back through and I wiped it down with a 120 brushing thinner to remove any type of contamination or oils that were on the surface. After I wiped it down, I then blew it off with compressed air to remove anything loose or any sanding residue that was left behind, or even some of the lint material uh, that could have came off from one of the paper towels I used to clean down the slab. Per usual, I like showing you some tips and tricks. What you saw there was an aerosol shaker. You could pick them up for 30 or 40 bucks online. They make shaking these 20 ounce cans really quick and easy. I then proceeded to put coats and coats and coats of captain's varnish on this. This was such a beautiful piece of wood that I really wanted to highlight all the different colors and the grain and things like that. So I decided to keep with a high gloss varnish. So it really brought out all that character. I put four to five different coats on it, sanded it, then came back, put a couple more coats sanded it with 400 and then 800. I then blew it off with the compressor again, solvent wiped it, blew it off with the compressor again, and then I applied a really nice heavy coat to the top of this. I ended up going over the, the table three or four, maybe even five times with the varnish. With the spray varnish, you're not applying a real heavy mill thickness, so I wasn't worried about pooling or puddling. Uh, I wasn't worried about any mud cracking or over application. Um, this product is really foolproof. It's really difficult to, to mess this up. So I applied a really nice, consistent, heavy coat for the last coat here. And you could see this piece, it, it, it came out looking like glass. This is one of the nicer uh, tables I've done. Again, I wanted to retain all that character. So you see um, some low spots and some other little imperfections in it. That was okay, I wanted to retain that. I then bought a table base for it. I put that together. Then I screwed it to the bottom. And then you'll see the final product here shortly. Like I said, this table came out looking like glass. It is absolutely beautiful. So why did I pick Pettit Captain's Varnish Aerosols? Well, quite simply, that live edge, if you were to try to roll that and tip it or just brush it, you'd probably have a tendency to get a lot of runs and it just wouldn't look very good. As you can see on the bottom of this table, there were no runs whatsoever. I didn't have to do any work to clean up the bottom of this base. The Captain's Varnish Aerosol did a fantastic job. Just look at this, it is absolutely beautiful. See you on the next one.